there are strong indications that Nigeria's governor's forum might opt for dialogue with bandits and people affected by their atrocities to address insecurity in the country. The chairman of the NGF, uh, Kayade Fayemi, said we also needed to explore other avenues side by side with whatever the security institutions are doing. If that means engaging in dialogue, we may not have a choice. Mr. Fayemi also said that we may have to do that, anything that will help us to deal with this immediate crisis and then to begin to address on a much more longer time basis the root causes of this social dislocation that is responsible for what we're witnessing all around us, end of quote. Now, discussing with me this evening is Public Affairs Analyst Tony Folorunshaw, National Publicity Secretary Pandev Ken Robinson, and security expert Dennis Amakri joining us again. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Well, you know, All right. So, dialogue with bandits. I'm going to start with you, um, Mr. Macri, once again. Uh, how good an idea is this, and, and, and what can it possibly achieve? If I have to advise the governor's forum, I will tell them right away, straight up, that they should not, they should not go ahead and be um, uh, dialoguing with bandits. There is no need for dialogue. If they're taking some people as hostage, they've kidnapped some people, we can, we can uh, 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 talk with them and then see how we can get the people back. Now, talking with uh, uh, bandits is, is not the same thing as paying ransom. This has to be very, very clear. Because when the governor says, we will do anything, we will do anything, that means you are going to do anything, including giving them money. And they will collect this money, they will send some of it back to their headquarters in Boko Haram camp in Sabisa, buy some arms and come back and terrorize you further. Hmm. So I think we better get our heads clear. If the government feels that they are in a tight corner and they want to do anything, then I will advise them to use that money, buy some more modern technology for the security agents to handle this particular national threat. Hmm. Because if we go ahead and say we want to do anything and be giving them money and everything, then I think we're going to regret it. Okay. In some months ago. Let me, let, let me, let me go to uh, Tony. The governor of Akiti State, Kaede Fayemi, who is in charge of the um, Nigeria Governors Forum, uh, on his visit to the state, said that they want to find a permanent solution which means that it seems that they've tried everything else and then this is what they've decided on. Um, to bring you know, an end to the violence, to all of the problem that is going on, but do you think they can really achieve this? Because, I mean, I'm wondering, these bandits and kidnappers um, are not people who can be reasoned with. I don't know if they really can be reasoned with, because if they can be reasoned with, we will not have them taking school children in the middle of the night or in broad daylight or taking school teachers or killing rice farmers on their rice farms. So really, what magic do you think the Governor's Forum can do that our security agencies are been unable to do or the Sheikh who has been discussing with these bandits uh, has, has not been able to do? Well, uh, thank you very much, Marianne. So basically, um to them, they are employing what we call political solutions. And uh, just like what um, Mr. Dennis said, this is not a right solution. They should just cut it off. Nigeria is gradually becoming a soft state. Um, a soft state in what X is that um, where people can do anything and they go away with it. We are gradually rewarding criminality. We are gradually turning our country to a state whereby Anybody can just decide one night or a day and start engaging in any sort of extreme criminal actions. Uh, you can imagine you as a soldier or you belong to any of our security outfits fighting um, insurgents, and uh, in the long run, they told you that they've 
rehabilitate these guys, and they've even sent them abroad to go and have access to education. So all your efforts, all your day and night fighting all these guys, what does it turn out? It's a political solution to the governor's forum, but this is, this is laughable to me because uh, these are guys that uh, security agency said they don't know. This guy doesn't come out to even tell us what are they really fighting for. They're fighting for land, they're fighting religion issues. What are they really fighting for, basically? So to, to me, it's, it's just going to further dampen the morale of our security agencies, because you are telling me that the person I've been fighting for quite a while, you probably have probably better ambition more than me. And just like what Mr. Denny said, uh, these guys will not just sit down and talk to them. There are a lot of numbers that we probably just went on the play during mm. the course of that conversation. What does this mean? It means that you are even empowering them and you are sending a green light that, okay, one, someone somewhere could just bring some people together then we turn it into a lucrative business. So, so it's better we just address this issue also and for all. Okay. If other neighbor countries, especially here in Africa, they can go all out against all these terrorist guys and they serve their capital punishment. Mm. What are we really doing differently? Okay. This is not a solution. They should just stop it right away. Mr. Karen Robinson, um, I'm, I'm interested in what Governor Fayemi also said about the issue of governors um, not being able to control security agencies. And he said that they only are chief security officers in name, but not in action. And I'm, I'm always curious about security votes that the gov governors have. Uh, he condoled with the governor of Niger State and all the things that he's experiencing, but he also seemed like the hands of the governors are tied, especially the governors in whom, whose states these issues are really happening and, and you know, these bandits are really operating in. Um, so what could the governors do uh, aside from just coming up with this idea? I mean, we have commissioners of police, we have um, army um, bosses who are situated in different states and barracks. Um, is there not enough collaboration in states that can help deal with this. We know that our security agencies are overstretched as it is right now. But other than this dialogue thing, can governors not look at other ways of dealing with this issue? Uh, unfortunately, there's, there's not much the governors can do by, by our constitution. You know that uh, internal security policing and all that is in the exclusive list. And it's one of the problems with that, uh, this 1999 constitution, uh, it's not a people's constitution. The governors are chief security officers of their state by, by just by name. Uh, they can't do anything. The inspector general, um, in fact, the commissioners of police in the states uh, don't take orders from the governors. They take orders from Abuja. So there is nothing much they can do. Uh, the situation Nigerian, with Nigerians are beginning to find themselves with, with this issue of dialoguing with uh, bandits, criminals. They are not fighting for anything. Um, Gumi, uh, a few days ago, made a comment that they are fighting an ethnic war, they are fighting for existence and survival. But that's absolutely ridiculous. They are, they are criminals, they are persons with absurd convictions, and there is nothing more she can do. They are, they are just giving themselves different colorations. In, in, in the Northwest, they are bandits. In, in, in Northeast, they are uh, Boko Haram. In Southern Nigeria, they are ethnic. killer ethnic. That, that, that is That's the story. And so what, what we begin to see is, is uh, the, the, the governors and the government of Nigeria telling, uh, telling people, you're on your own, there's nothing much you can do, we're overwhelmed. That's the story. And, and when you begin to negotiate and begin to dialogue with uh, bandits and criminals, then that means someday you begin to also uh, dialogue with, uh, with armed robbers. You, you begin to dialogue with all sorts of criminals in, in, in our country because that's the trend. And it's unfortunate, very unfortunate. Uh, quickly, before we wrap up, the issue of looking, always looking at the root cause, but you just talked about Niger Delta militancy. Um, is, could, it, could this also be a strategy? Looking at the reason why these banditry even started in the first place, could that also help? I mean, because we always look at how to quench the fire, not looking at how the fire started. Um, like you have stated, um, Gumi is saying, Sheikh Gumi is saying that they're fighting, it's an ethnic war. But then, of course, Nigeria is a country that is divided along ethnic lines. I don't see other ethnic groups 
raising, um, taking up arms and fighting for anything. I mean, we see these clashes in different local governments every now and again. But can we start by looking at the root cause of this problem? Could it be poverty? Could it be, I mean, I'm just, I'm trying at the top of my head to think of maybe if we look at the root cause of this problem, that way we can deal with it squarely. It is the failure of governance. There's, there's poor, absolute poor governance in Nigeria at, at various levels, and it's unfortunate. And, and the things we see are ramifications of, of, of poor governance. And for, for us to begin to uh, perhaps genuinely address some of these issues, we need to begin with the, the, the style and manner in which uh, those in authority conduct the affairs of state. Except we do things rightly and, and, and kind of uh, eradicate some of the very inconsistencies on the acceptabil unacceptability that we see. Uh, these kind of situations will continue. From, from, from bandits in the, in the northwest, we could have something else in, 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 the, in, the, in the software. And, and uh, I'm not a prophet of doom, but that's the trend, that, and we're seeing it. Nigeria is sliding into, uh, into anarchy, and, 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 and the security agencies are overwhelmed. In a, in a nation of over 200 million people, we, we have less than a million security guards, including the police, the army, the navy, the air force. And that's unacceptable. So there are a lot of things to be done. First is the, the restructuring of the country. Okay. Then we need to have some level of sincerity from those in, in authority. The inconsistencies are too glaring in this, in this government. For instance, the... the uh, well, Mr. Robinson, well, unfortunately, to unfortunately to gentlemen, the, unfortunately, the, we're out of time. What? I apologize, unfortunately, gentlemen, we're out of time in my... Uh, we have to wrap things up. But I want to say thank you very much, Ken Robinson, um, Dennis and Macri, and Tony Folorensha for speaking with us on this Thanks segment. Thanks for right. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay, we'll take a very quick break, and when we come back, I'll be giving you my take. Stay with us. Well, here's my take. It's no longer news that the country is facing one of the most challenging security situations with terrorists and insurgents and bandits who have encircled the country. Boko Haram continues to wreak havoc with mathematical precision in its traditional domains of the Northeast. Other terrorists and warlords uh, have emerged in the Northwest, and they are bandits in nearly every zone. Now, to borrow the words of Mr. Daley Momodu, they operate with so much confidence and gusto. They dare the authorities to come after them, knowing that each time there is a clash, it is the Nigerian military that is worse off with its nose proverbially bloodied. Our security agents have been overstretched. Now, the Niger Delta militants are also threatening to cripple the economy, as they are alleging that the federal government is treating issues that are affecting them in kids' gloves. So how long will we continue to hope and wish this away? How long will we wait for government to rise to the occasion and do their job? I think it's time for us to put pressure on our senators, on our representatives and our governors, who in turn will put pressure on the federal government and put them on their toes to make sure that they protect our country and its borders in not just words, but in action. No more sitting on the fence, people. We cannot risk this country falling into the hands of terrorists. I am Mary Anacom, thanking you for watching. Do have a good evening.